Well, here we are at the Pleasant Street Center. It's Tuesday night, the 30th of April. Inside, we have an event about senior living options. Let's go in and see what's going on. Welcome to the Senior Center. Here we are tonight to talk about living options here in Reading at the Senior Center. What is your name, sir? Russell Carter. All right. Thank you for your service. Good evening. Good evening. Could I have everyone's uh, attention? I want to welcome you all to the Pleasant Street Center, uh, Reading's gathering place for seniors. You may have used to know us as the Senior Center, but as times change, so does the Pleasant Street Center. I want to welcome you to our first ever evening program here at the Center. We're hoping for a great success tonight, and we will continue to do this to bring you information beneficial to seniors here in Reading. We have a wonderful panel with us here tonight and they will have an opportunity to each speak with, to you about what they have to offer within the town. At the far end is Teresa Burns from Wingate, then Karen Beats from Cedar Glen Apartments, Jackie Carson from Sanborn Home Services in Peter Sanborn Place, and Doug Warren from Longwood, and I forgot myself. My name is Jane Burns. I'm the Elder and Human Services Administrator for the Town of Reading as well. So before, as we get started tonight, um, this is the topic of tonight's discussion is senior living options in Reading. And specifically in Reddit, in Elder Services, uh, we get calls constantly. I, I'm a Reading resident, I want to stay in my home, uh, but I need help. I'm a Reading resident, I want to downsize, my home is too much. We also get calls, I want to move my parents to Reddit. It's a wonderful testimony on a town when so many people want to come and live here or want to stay here and it makes me very proud to be part of this community. As we get started tonight, um, I do have to give you a little disclaimer. Uh, we are very grateful for our speakers to be here this evening and giving of their time to come and talk about the different aspects of senior living. Uh, they have a great deal of information to share and I'm not giving them a whole lot of time. So they will be available afterwards if you have specific questions or if you want information. Uh, we have some wonderful refreshments. You could have a bite to eat and address those questions. Uh, what I do need to let you know is that in elder services in the town of Reading, we don't endorse any one particular organization. Uh, we brought these folks here together tonight uh, to provide you with information on options of remaining here in Reading. Okay. So Reading choices. What are your choices for living here in Reading? Um, you can remain at home with some assistance. There's a number of different organizations out, uh, within the community that will come in and help you to allow you to remain at home, which Jackie will address in a moment. There are senior, senior housing apartments. There are Cedar Glen and also Frank Tanner Drive. Many of you might have heard of Frank Tanner Drive as Tannerville. And Karen will address senior housing apartments. Assisted living. And Doug will address with you, what is assisted living? We hear that term all the time. And assisted living facilities in Reading include Longwood Place and Peter Sanborn Place. Long-term care or skilled nursing. What exactly entails long-term care or skilled nursing? 
and that's where Teresa will come in and address that with you. And finally, we'll wrap up by talking about adult community living here in Reading. Where do we see seniors come when they come to Reading or they downsize in Reading? If they don't go to one of these facilities, where do they actually decide to reside? So with that said, I'd like to introduce Jackie Carson, who is um, the president and CEO of Sanborn Home Care Services. Sanborn Place Home Care and Day Services. It's kind of grown over the years because the elderly population and senior services are growing, so we happen to be expanding along with it. Um, but the options um, to stay at home are available to you. Um, we, you know, through many programs. One of the things is I sit on cabinets in D.C., and Massachusetts is so fortunate to be in front of all the states as far as how they're caring for the elders. <coughs> I know we're here of cutbacks and we're experiencing cutbacks and things, but still, there's a lot of services here in Massachusetts that other states don't have. We're really in a fortunate place, even when there's cutting backs, we're actually probably going to be able to survive because we plan so well for our, our elders. Um, so, when talking about home care options, um, there are private home care. There is, um, let's start with the umbrella. The Executive Office of Elder Affairs dictates how all of us operate, assisted living. I'm a housing and services model at Sanborn Place, or home care models, or even the state, the DPH. They all work together um, over. So, and, and that is, there's area agent, Mystic Valley Elder Services is our local area ASAP. And they actually, the money funnels from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs to Mystic Valley. And then Mystic Valley creates, and the state creates, different programs and options for people to live at home and be cared for. Uh, so people know the state home care program, which is a minimal program of care, which will allow somebody, you know, a little personal care, shopping and laundry during the week, maybe a little housekeeping. And then there's different ECOP programs, which are different programs under um, the ECOP and Choices program, which will allow for more care, and they're different income bases. And fortunately, what has come is we have now what's called a waiver program, the Frail Elder Program which is a program that um, is funded through MassHealth. So if you are a MassHealth eligible, oh. and which is an income-based tested program, which means your assets, we have to qualify for the MassHealth. But that is a program that will allow a person in a, to live in their home or will provide as many services as if you were in a nursing home. It's a wraparound program to help people stay and remain in their home. You know, one of the ways that the state is going is that people will either live in a congregate care, in a place assisted living, or Sanborn, or, or places like this. Um, but to be in the future, to be in long-term care, you're really going to have to need to be in long-term care. And I know there's always been the fear that, um, you know, I'm going to end up in a nursing home. Well, you really have to be in dire straits to end up in a nursing home these days. So I think we need, we need to get rid, you know, Wash that fear away and think about other options of what you would need at home. What kind of care would you need? What kind of modifications might you need to your home if you want to stay in your home? There is a zero interest rate home modification program that's up to $30,000. You know, you can apply for up to $30,000 to retrofit your home. You might need to retrofit it with a small bathroom in your, you know, the closet downstairs, you might, you know, well, many people I do not have first floor living. You live in, I mean, one of the things, you know, like a lot of the old colonials and, you know, houses in um, Reading, they just weren't set up, you know, now the ranches were built um, so that people can age in them. And it's funny thing is now if you see a house being built, people are really thinking about that. They're building universal design and making it so well, someone's going to age here. But we didn't do that. Because one of the things is we didn't think about after 75 or 80 where we we're going to be. And I can bet many of you in that, this room are pushing that or maybe even possible that. And you're here because, wow, I've got another 20 years to figure out where I'm going, what I'm going to do, and how I want it to be. So when we talk about the long-term care, long-term care is really going to be there for long-term care. It will be there for rehab. And even your days in rehab will be minimal. But your care at home is going to be really important, and you're going to be in charge of that care. We have, in this town alone, there is a number of home care agencies. I mean, I have Sanborn Home Care, but there are a number of other home care agencies. There's different programs that mix and match. 
if you have are the veteran, um, you can look at different pro um, programs they have. There's a number of programs that they'll come out, and then they can mix and match with Mystic Valley programs and with private pay. So a lot of times it's putting this like you know this quilt together with all the little pieces, you know, and it comes together. But there are resources out there um, when somebody calls and often somebody will call and the first thing I'll say, well, let's talk about all the resources and how we can see just what you need and how we can put that, those, that puzzle together for you so that you can stay in your home. Or the other thought is, I mean, a number of people would like to move into Sanborn. We are expanding. However, you'll find that affordable housing is, there's long waiting lists for it. So I encourage everyone and anyone here that's not on the waiting list if you're looking to move, you know, Chilltalk, Cedar Glen. Um, and I'll say, you know, even on the side of the market side, we have an aging population that is about a tsunami. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come fast. Um, and right behind it, you know, are the baby boomers. So they're going to crowd you all out. I'm looking. I don't have a lot of boomers in the room, but those boomers are coming quickly. And they're going to, like, you know, they're going to take options before you do. So it's a really good time now to be thinking about what other choices. And doing that with the resources here, we can, you know, specifically look at, you know, your home, your what's best for the future, are you living alone? And another thing that plays, you know, into big uh, people living home is technology these days. I was just with the Phillips company and Zephyr company this um, morning and we we're talking about we we're actually test piloting a of medical monitoring vital programs um, in Sanborn that can be rolled out to the community, which you will walk around. How many people got the, uh, the iPhone or a phone? Okay, all right. So you're gonna walk around and you're gonna say, what's my blood pressure today? It's gonna tell you what your blood pressure is. What's my sugar level, like, you know? Or your family member's gonna be able to read it, or you'll have it onto a monitoring system and it'll be a real strong wellness program because the last thing we know with healthcare reform is we're not going to end up in emergency rooms. We're not going to be sitting there. Um, we're not going to be wanting three days or two days under observation days because they didn't admit us and we couldn't get into uh, rehab. So there's going to be a lot of taking charge of your own health kit in the next you know, years to come. And technology is going to play a big part of that. Um, so the world of caring for, uh, you know, caring for yourself us caring as caregivers is really changing quickly and rapidly to keep up with all the changing needs and the demands on us. I mean, I can say alone in this town last year, the rate of what we were doing last year, we're probably doing 40% more this year. And that's not without, that's without marketing. That's just people, you know, are aging in place. And that's a wonderful thing. Thank you, Jackie. And I'll answer more questions as we Right. What we can do is we can go through each each one, and then if you have questions, specific questions, we can do a question and answer session. Um, the next option in the community is senior housing apartments, and here to speak on that is Karen Beats from Cedar Glen. As I mentioned, Cedar Glen is um, uh, designated for elderly or disabled, being 62 or older. Um, the we don't provide many services. Um, it's more if you're independent living, it's there if you, your income, um, it helps you. Um, you pay 30% of your adjusted income. Um, there are income limits of 41,100. Uh, the max that you could make for one person, for two people is 46,980. So basically what it does is, it, you qualify with that criteria, um, you would pay 30%. So if your income goes down or up, your rent's adjusted accordingly. So most, you find it that it, it's affordable. The rents that you find out there, they're in the 1200 range and I think up to over 2000, more than that. So um, it, it is a great alternative if you're not quite where you need the services. Um, we, do have a, um, a wait list, uh, which is about three to five years. Um, if Cedar Glen has one and two bedroom apartments, they're, um, they're 
Uh, we have them on the first floor, second floor. We have handicapped accessible units available. Um, it, it's, like I said, it, it's affordable, it's there it, it financially. Um, the place itself is great. The best thing about Cedar Glen is the residents, a uh, great group of people. A lot of activities that go on with the residents. Um, we have a community room. Um, it, it's, it, it's a nice community. Um, it's great looking grounds as well as the apartments themselves are a nice size. Um, but it is, like I said, it's, it's more that financially you have the need. It's not that you're looking for a lot of the services. So you have that option, uh, you know, with um, if you're not quite where you need that extra assisted type of living care. Could you repeat the question, please? We did if uh, if you went into an okay. apartment like Cedar Glen and you perhaps needed some home health care, would that be an option? And she said yes. Oh, okay. Thank and, you. And with the town of Reading, I gotta commend it, it has some great services. A lot of the residents take advantage of that. Um, and you have so much that they do offer, and I'm sure you know she can speak about that. Um, any other questions? Or? There are a number of people that are receiving services that have aged in place. I see a number of people receiving the whole, the, what yeah. I was talking about, the home services. You got Meals on Wheels. You have uh, where the van that comes and, and takes residents out for the shopping. Um, you have uh, <coughs> um, you have people that come in and help residents with their cleaning or whatever. So there's a lot of services that you could have outreach to and still have that type of independent living. Um, but it, it is, like I said, you do have the subsidy with it, um, which is uh, a big plus. Um, Karen, can you let them know the process? How would they go about getting, if they were interested, can they come for a tour? Or do you, what's your process? The process of, uh, for an apartment there is that one, you get an application, um, you'd fill it out, uh, you have to talk with you to make sure that you are qualified. Um, you fill it out, you send it in or, or you drop it off, we date stamp it, um, and at that point you are put on the wait list as long as you fit the criteria. One, you're, you're within that income limit as well as the requirement of being elderly or disabled, like I said, being 62 or older. Um, after that, you'll get a notification of where you are on the wait list within 60 days. After that, um, every year we do update the wait list, and we will send you uh, a notice, and if you're still interested in remaining on the wait list, um, then you would send it back, and, and eventually when you get in the top five, We'll call you in and we'll go through all the financial and and get you prepared for a move-in. Um, I extend to anybody that wants to come by, very much welcome. Usually the first of the month I might have a vacancy um, and you're welcome <coughs> to come and take a look at <coughs> one, the property and, and the unit itself. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the process that you go through. Um, are there any of the units that are not subsidized? So if someone wasn't looking for that subsidy? Uh, there, there are, um, it, yes. There, there's one unit <coughs> at Cedar Glen that is a market uh, apartment. Um, and that, you have to still be within, because of the tax credit associated with it, you cannot your income cannot be more than 41100 which is a gross amount. Um, and that, I, I, I'd be happy to take anybody's application on that, to go on a wait list right now. It is occupied. Um, I don't have anyone on that list as like a backup. Um, so it is a good opportunity um, for anybody that 
is uh, wanting to be on that list. The other thing I've mentioned is the wait list for one bedroom, um, if handicapped, you're probably talking about one to two years. So each category has a different weight to it. Um, the other thing I've mentioned, if you have a need for a two bedroom, um, that if you can take a second floor unit, <coughs> my last vacancy I went through 32 people because a lot of people need a first floor. Uh, Cedar Glen does have a, a second floor that you need to go up a flight of stairs and some people cannot do that. So um, it, it gives the opportunity for somebody that um, you know might be able to, uh, it, that would have a problem on, with the second floor apartment to kind of get in sooner. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that um, we do have a couple of preferences. Uh, one is if you're a resident um, with the sale of the property, they picked up the preference. If you are a resident of Reading, um, you do have a preference uh, that um, we do need to place 30% um, on the wait list who are residents of Reading or, or if you've been a school teacher, uh, worked in the town, <coughs> if you're currently working um, for it, or employed in the town of Reading, that will give you a preference. Um, the other thing is that uh, with the subsidy, it does require that 40% that are placed per year uh, are under extreme low um, category, so that if your income is low and, and you're looking, um, definitely I would apply. Um, that is a reason we could, you might be placed sooner um, to, to, so that we fill that 40% rule um, of extreme low. Extreme low, basically one person is about 19800 if you're in that gross income. Yeah. Well, let's say over a five-year period, mm -hmm. what, would, what would be an average turnover on a yearly basis? Yeah. Uh, it varies from year to year. Um, I would say last year we had a turnover of 22. Uh, the year prior to that, it was about, I think, 11 or 12. How many apartments do you have there? There's 114 units. 150? 114. Okay. There's 84 one bedroom, and there's 32 bedroom apartments. That's about a 10% turnover each year. And, and it varies. Um, it, it does vary. Any questions? Or? Karen will be available after all of the speakers. And I think I saw her bring in a box of paperwork. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I do have applications and, and uh, some information on the property. And I'll put it on the table. And um, you're welcome to take an application. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. The other senior housing apartment that we mentioned was Frank Tanner Drive or Tannerville. And unfortunately, Lynn could not be here this evening. However, she did also bring over some floor plans and some applications for those that are interested in Frank Tanner, Frank Tanner Drive. Um, again, there are income, require, income guidelines we're going into Frank Tanner Drive, and also there is a one to two year wait. So again, I think we're kind of hearing that the message here is planning and long term planning. Um, so afterwards, you're welcome to grab some applications. If we run out, we can always um, take your name and get you additional ones. Frank Tanner, I think, is very similar in um, the respect of Cedar Glen. If you are a resident there, again, you can get home services. Can I speak to that? Sure. Actually, I would um, Frank Tanner has a really strong service program. Um, uh, we actually provide services to um, Frank Tanner um, seven days a week. Um, 
what we don't do is overnight, but if we have an urgent call program, but actually seeing what home care provides from 7 in the morning till I, I think we finish over there around 9, 10 o'clock at night. So people do have morning and some, like the community, you could be in someone's home two and three times a day. So we try to service up um, Frank Tanner just as if we were servicing up Sanborn other than getting that um, overnight care. Thank you. Thank you. Frank Tannerville as well as Cedar Glen is independent living. Um, it, is, it is just as if you were living in your own condo, your own apartment, but these um, areas do welcome in-home services. You're welcome to have in-home services, but you're also, but it doesn't mean if you live there you have to have in-home services. It's independent living. I didn't hear anything you said. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, as we were saying that Cedar Glen and Frank Tannerville is considered independent living, um, but it, it's more of a financial requirement um, to live there, but it's like living in your own condominium or apartment building. It's independent living, and if you do need services, they welcome the services to come in to help you, but it doesn't mean that if you live there, you have to have services. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are the income qualifications could we repeat the question every time there's a question someone say it very much out loud okay. uh, the question was are the income guidelines the same at Frank Tanner as they are at Cedar Glen and the answer is yes they are next we're going to venture into the world of assisted living and here in Reading, the options for assisted living. And I'd like to introduce you to Doug Warren from Longwood Place. For those of you who have been here for a long time, it's also mm -hmm. the old Pearl Street School. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm Doug Warren. I'm the director of marketing for Longwood Place at Reading. Uh, we have 86 apartments, and we've been open for 16 years. We opened in October of 1996. Um, we really have a whole uh, gamut of different types of residents. We have some residents who still drive. Uh, we have some, a lot of residents who don't drive, but they're there because they can't, um, you know, upkeep their house any longer, uh, their apartment any longer. Uh, they can't consistently do uh, or cook for themselves three meals a day. Uh, and we have residents who need uh, assistance with personal care. Um, so it really runs the gamut. Um, we have uh, 46 one bedrooms, we have 34 studio apartments, and we have six two bedroom apartments. And all of the two bedroom apartments come with two baths. Um, the, we have uh, 18 apartments out of our 86 apartments are under a tax credit program and also under a uh, state and federal subsidized program called Group Adult Foster Care. Uh, there's financial qualifications, as was indicated before, for the tax credit uh, program. Um, the, and I'll go into that in detail in a second. And the group adult foster care program is really for people who have extremely, like, very limited income. Uh, I think the maximum income you can have under that particular program is like $1,084 per month of income and you can have no more, uh, no more than $2,000 of assets at any one time. So that's a pretty stringent program. There's also a medical qualification or clinical qualification, I should say, for that program. Um, the other tax credit program, um, it's still an out-of-pocket cost. However, um, you, it's about half um, the cost of a market rate apartment. And Basically, what we look at is all of a person's annual income, and we take that amount, and we add only 2% of their total assets to that figure. And if that amount comes below 34250 then you would financially qualify. Um, the, the, for couples, it's a little bit higher. Um, and it really works for most <coughs> residents, uh, most seniors, because they have you know, most seniors, I'm not saying all, but most have limited, limited income, but they have, you know, uh, typically a lot of more assets. So it does work in that regard for them. Um, our market rate apartments, um, 
they, right now, we actually have availability, so if you want to um, talk to me further about that, I can certainly go into more detail. Um, we, we have a couple of differences uh, specific to us is we're independently owned. We're not owned by a corporation or a chain that has you know, several other assisted livings across the state or across the country. Um, I think it really works to our benefit um, in the respect that we really are like a family at Mama Place and Ready. We have very, very low turnover of staff. Uh, majority of our staff has been with us for all 16 years we've been open. Uh, so it really, you know, helps seniors to feel much more relaxed knowing that they're, you know, amongst uh, the same faces and same names that they, have, they see every day and every month. Um, we also have an all-inclusive rate, um, so as you need more assistance over time, you typically are not charged much more money per month for getting those additional personal care services. Um, we include three meals per day. We include uh, weekly housekeeping of each apartment. Uh, we also launder the uh, bed linens and the towels for each of our residents on a weekly basis. Um, anybody who needs assistance managing um, their medications, uh, you know, getting reminders to make sure that they take their medications accurately, which is a huge, huge issue, um, that is included. Uh, we have a, our own version of Lifeline Pendants, which is included. It works in the community and it works on the courtyard of our community. Um, we are um, on just under five acres of land, so we have a lot of, uh, and we're in a nice, as you know, where most of the, uh, I think most of you know where the Pearl Street School is. We're in a beautiful neighborhood, a lot of uh, walking paths around. We have a soccer field right in front of our community where the uh, U10, you know, kids that are under 10 years old play soccer, and a lot of our residents go out and watch that. Um, we have a whole uh, array of activities. Um, you know, we really have something for everybody there. Um, but really what's key is uh, we do a service plan for every single resident there because every resident has different needs. Um, but we really encourage as much independence as one can handle. Um, residents are free to come and go from our community. That's totally up to them. Um, we do ask everybody to sign in out because we want to know if they're here or not here. But that goes for not only residents, but family members, healthcare professions. But the bottom line is, it's really what um, each resident makes of their day. That's really what they want. They want to continue to go about their day how they want to live it. So, and just knowing that we have staff there to assist them whenever they need assistance. Um, we have a staff there that's there 24 hours a day. Um, we don't donate anybody or we don't, uh, you know, bother them if they don't need assistance, but if they do need assistance, we are there to help them out. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I can't think of anything else at this time. If anybody have any questions? Is this another thing we have to plan ahead? I mean, I'm fine right now. Yep. If it takes 10 years or 8 years to get in there, should I apply now? Um, it, it, the answer is that it depends. Typically... Could you the, repeat the question? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, she was asking if she, assisted living, like has been discussed with other uh, options, should she plan now? Um, it wouldn't hurt to look around at different assisted livings because every assisted living has a different feel to it. Um, so you may want to just start looking around just to kind of get the different uh, feel of the ambiance and you know if, that, if you feel it would be a right fit for you, whether it be now or down the road, um, because everyone is different. Um, so I would certainly look at a lot of different ones. Um, the, uh, we typically are full with a little bit of a waiting list. However, in the last few months, we have had a couple of available apartments. We have some uh, studios right now, and we have one one bedroom. Um, so it really just depends. Um, there is typically, on average, and again, this varies. I think you had the question of how often do apartments turn over. Um, sometimes we don't have any apartments that turn over for one or two months, and sometimes we'll have three or four that turn over in a couple of months. So I would say, I think we had about two, on average, apart, uh, two, one to two apartments per month that turn over. Uh, but again, it depends on the person's uh, health and situation. Um, but I certainly, you know, it doesn't help not to plan. I mean, I would certainly, you know, at least start the ball rolling. 
what happens if a, if a uh, resident runs out of funds? Well, that's where we have those 18 apartments, and a lot of times people that move in under the market rate for those apartments, they'll go on our wait list for those uh, subsidized apartments. Wait a minute, you lost me. Okay. You have a resident. Yep. And he, that person runs out of funds, and you're talking about a wait list. In well, other words, I want to know what happens to that individual. Right. Does he get subsidized? Does he go on Medicaid? Right. If you go on to our wait list for those 18 apartments. But well, he doesn't get put up. If, well, you're losing me. Okay. <laughs> you have to, you you're have to. About wait <laughs> That's fine. That doesn't really bell with me. <laughs> There's a wait list for our 18 subsidized apartments. The wait list right now is about two and a half years. Some people don't qualify mm -hmm. as, as soon as they move in. Some people do qualify as soon as they move in. So you have to make the judgment of when you would qualify based on the <laughs> amount of years, about two and a half to three years. Um, so a lot of people will go on that wait list and then when their name comes up, they will you know, be in one of those subsidized apartments. Um, a couple people have made the mistake of not going on the wait list and then they do run out of money and we can't really unfortunately do anything with, with them because they did not apply sooner to be on that wait list. So um, it's important that you do go on the wait list if you do qualify financially for those apartments. Um, you know, otherwise, yeah, we would have to um, you know, help you look for other options um, if you do run out of money eventually. Does that also apply to Sam Warren Flight? No. Yeah. What happened? It's a different, it's a different list. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Your list is a lot longer, too. Jackie, do you want to explain? Yes. No, there was a difference, and that's Peter a good question. Sanborn, uh, yeah, well, Sam, um, Peter Sanborn Place was built as independent housing. I'm sure everyone here remembers 30 years ago. It's 30 years young um, this year. But um, actually, um, it's a housing and services model now. We do everything assisted living does plus. We're not under the same regulations, so we have independent hospice care there. Our turnovers are very low because we do have such a strong aging in place model. All of our services are a la carte. You come in, you, your rent is based on your income. It is a low income for seniors. Our expansion will be market and moderate rates to add. We're adding 48 additional units. Um, However, service packages will always be a la carte. You'll pick what meals, what meal if you want. You'll pick your service plan. You'll decide, you know, from soup to nuts, what you would like to have, and you'll or grow into or out of it, per se. If you come in, some people come in from Wingate, and they might need more services. And after they've been there for a period of time, they need less services. We've actually probably are experiencing three turnovers a year, and we do have a wait list of or. 150 people. However, there. Well, five years ago, I applied there, and I was 140 on the list. I, that's I, I know. I tried to check into it about a year ago, and I couldn't get an answer to if I had moved up at all. Well, there's there's three different lists. There's a list for being independent. You look fairly independent. It's more complicated every minute. Right. There's a, there's three lists so that the, the people there are allowed to age in place as Sam Warren. We have three levels of care, people that are independent. Level one, come, go, do. They can choose to use the activities program. They can use the tour service or have meals, whatever they'd like. Level two is somebody who would need shopping, um, laundry, housekeeping. Um, and then level three is somebody needing a minimal of one hour a day of personal care up to 24 seven safety checks and hospice care. So people, Moving in, it's known if you know people moving into Sanborn, you're not leaving Sanborn until you're end life, and that's that's where life is. You move in, and that's you're done your plan. Thank you. So to continue on um, and to answer your question also, I would say the majority of the people, um, when they move into Longwood Place, they do either um, eventually need to sell their home or their condominium, or some people can move in and don't have to sell it right away. They can wait a little bit. Um, but you know, again, um, the majority of the apartments are private pay. And so people do typically, when they're ready for that transition, um, sometimes by choice and sometimes by not choice, um, 
they you know, would put up their home or their condo uh, for sale. And that's how they were able to carry that over to living at Longman Place. But again, um, 18 of those 86 apartments does help those people who cannot afford um, you know, the private pay for those other apartments. If it's any consolation, 40, our, our resident um, de demographics um, at Sanborn, we have 73 units there and 40 people are well into their 90s, so. <laughs> so, we could have, they'll tell you themselves, there could be a mass accident at any day, but um, they're well cared for, but still, the clock's, you know, the clock's ticking. Our, uh, our, our youngest resident is 66, and our oldest resident is 101. Okay. Wow. Wow. And, uh, our average age is about 85, and we actually have had, uh, we have three residents who have been there for 10, I think, or 11 years. Um, we, our average, um, you know, the average uh, person lives at Longwood Place for about <coughs> a little over three years. I think there was a question over here. Uh, on the, on the Peter Sanborn, mm -hmm. I know you have plans for expansion, uh, and I don't know what they are, but to, to give us some idea sure. on the expansion to alleviate this gentleman saying the battle of the Peter Yeah, Peter we have, we're going to actually move forward. We just come up with a real creative plan of financing. It's hard to finance affordable and mixed housing these days, but we, because of the times, it's so difficult mm -hmm. right now to build, we actually came up with an idea that's going to be rolled out, but we're going to add 48 additional units. Seven of those will be two bedrooms, but the others will be one bedrooms. So they'll be universal design, um, meaning that you will age in place. Everything will be barrier free, wider doors, lower kitchen cap. So, you know, you, they won't, they'll look like you don't have a disability. However, if you should change and have needs, you can age and stay there. Um, the showers will be barrier free, you know, all tiled and things like that. But we hope, I hope um, that next year at this time that we're looking pretty close to saying, okay, by the end of the summer, our units will be up and built and, you know, and then there's, because it's, you know, other areas and communities are also looking. I mean, a lot of people move, Sanborn is also, it's not just Reading. We will do Reading preference um, with our new units. However, people from other areas move into Sanborn also. So we have other places like North Reading looking and talking to us saying, how can we you know, bring a Sanborn to North Reading? So, and I feel like every community should have, you know, a Sam, should have living options for them. I mean, fortunately, Reading has several living options, but there are communities that have none. So the idea of our neighboring communities is how can we take care of them instead of bringing everybody you know, to Reading where some people can stay in their community. But 48 units will be, you know, some of, there'll be another probably 12 low income and, and then the rest will be market. And the market will be a cross subsidy to help with services and things, kind of the Robin Hood theory. theory. Those who have will help those who don't and we'll all live as one big happy family. <laughs> Thank you. And our final speaker tonight is uh, Teresa Burns. And she's going to speak with you about uh, long-term care and skilled nursing, because for some folks um, that that is an option. So Teresa, why don't you fill us in on Wingate? Sure. So I, we've heard a lot about planning, and I just want to commend all of you for coming to this program this evening, because this is certainly the first step in planning. Um, and if, if you can take anything away from uh, anything that uh, we all say is to not only uh, plan, do your homework, think ahead five years down the road, even if you, you know, are not thinking that you might need to tap into one of these resources, but also talk to your families, talk to your physician, talk to your support system about, uh, you know, what if something happens and I end up in the hospital, you know, what are we thinking as a family and as a um, support system is the best resource and the best option for me. Um, so I encourage you all to take this information back to your families, your um, children, your spouses, and just have that open dialogue and that open conversation. I know you know, most people don't want to talk about, you know, when they get old, and they certainly don't want to talk about coming to see me in a nursing home. Um, but unfortunately, that, that does happen to some folks, and it, it does 
um, come after a lengthy illness or um, you know some kind of a, a crisis situation that that lands you in the hospital. So um, to kind of uh, piggyback on what Jackie said, it it is change the the face of long term care and skilled care is changing drastically with healthcare reform, and I agree with Jackie one hundred percent that um, folks will no longer just get dumped in a nursing home and just land in a nursing home or a skilled nursing facility. It really, truly will be those folks that that is the, the best option for them, which is great because even though I represent long-term care and skilled nursing, I want to see everybody be home as long as possible, whether that be Longwood Place, Sanborn, um, Cedar Glen, wherever home is, uh, that is the best option for a lot of people, but not the best option for everyone. Um, so at Wingate at Reading, we are a family-owned um, company. About 20, uh, around 25 years ago, um, the family started the Wingate Homes. Um, Wingate at Reading is a five-star building, so that's basically like a straight A on your report card. It's a quality care um, measure. It's very exciting to announce that we're a five-star. We're very proud. We're very proud of our team and of our care at. Uh, Wingate at Reading to be able to say that we are a five-star building. Um, and in addition to long-term care, if you do not know, um, the short-term rehab is now in long-term care facilities. It's no longer at the hospital like it was years ago. And rehab, the face of rehab is changing drastically as well. We're seeing a lot of young athletes. We're seeing um, someone that might have <laughs> fallen and <laughs> needs a little orthopedic rehab uh, you know on an ankle so so there's there's a, a huge range in ages mobility um, care levels skill needs um, it's just it's such a wide range but we um, do special specialize in orthopedic rehab we have 123 beds total in the entire building um, the rehab is entirely separate from the long-term care. It's in the same building, but they, they are separate. So our goal when you come to us for rehab is get you in, get you well, strengthened, back to your baseline or better, and get you back home. So lengths of, lengths of stay vary quite, you know, quite a bit. It depends on what you're, um, what you're there for. Um, but we do see a lot of orthopedic rehabs. We do have um, Dr. Barrasso, David Barrasso, and Dr. Wayne Saltman are our physicians that uh, come into the building and see all of our patients. And um, we, we do um, pretty much every kind of rehab, um, cardiac rehab, um, pulmonary. So, it, you know, if you need rehab, not all rehabs are the same. So. The rehab that might be right for Jackie for her ankle might not be the right rehab for Joe that may have COPD and coming out of the hospital. So I think that if you um, have some time and you you know would like to just explore options for any of these type, types of resources, take advantage of the time because a lot of people that we see come into us during crisis a, a crisis situation. So they didn't have the luxury to tour, to call, to ask any questions, to attend a program, talk to a nurse, talk to a rehab director, um, because it was a crisis situation, an unplanned um, fall or illness that landed them in the hospital. When you're in the hospital, you're moving. They're turning people over really quickly. Um, insurance is really dictating how quickly um, you're turning over and how short your length of stay in the hospital is. I, I, I'm still amazed today at some of the people that we see going home and how years ago those people would have never went home at that level of care and, and, and being that sick. So you're all here, you're well, you're healthy, you're mobile. Get out and, and, and just tour some places, ask some questions. Go meet the um, teams and really ask the questions that are important to you, to your family, and to your wellness um, because you, you have the advantage of being able to do so. So that would be my yep. strongest suggestion, whether it be assisted living or you know congregate housing, whatever it ends up being, um, just so you know it's out there so that 
should the need arise or maybe you have a planned um, procedure, um, we love to tour people that have a planned procedure because we can answer all those questions so that when you arrive and you're coming out of having this procedure and you're on medication and you're in pain and you know you may be a little disoriented from the transition but you have all your questions answered so it's it's a nice feeling to go in with confidence and to go in knowing all the answers that you had um, because you did do your research and, and do your legwork so yes a lot of us uh, are on medicare and in order to do that you also have this supplemental insurance where your plan specifies certain places and certain doctors you can see and go to mm -hmm. how does one indicate a preference for some place if your plan doesn't uh, allow that well, in, unfortunately, insurance does dictate everything, <laughs> as we know. Um, we do accept most insurances. There, there are a few that we do not accept, but we do accept um, most of the major insurances and the supplemental plans. Um, but that would be the first question that I would ask if I was calling or touring um, somewhere. And um, if there's not, if they do not accept your um, insurance plan and they're not contracted with your insurance, um, you can ask them, you know, um, who might be contracted with that um, insurance, or you can default down back to Mystic Valley Elder Services, and they're wonderful at being able to put you in the right direction um, and answer those specific questions. I but could probably speak that the accountable care organizations now that manage your Medicare benefits are that's where that's coming from. But part of that is they're shopping around with the rehabs and things and wanting that they're going to pick the best rehab. So the rehab that gets you in does their rehab and gets you out. There's like a window of time that really is what you should be able. There was a time when people went into rehab, you had the 100 days, and if you had Blue Cross, you had another 25 days. Well, those days are all gone. So the ACO that will be managing who your primary care physician who now reports to, um, which with the, the, the nurse practitioner that follows you and things like that, but it really is the insurance. Um, we'll be looking and we'll be contracting with places like Wingate for their, their um, ability to provide the care and the quality of care that's needed and most needed for what you're being rehabbed for. And they're also gonna follow you from when you're in the hospital out to that care. I mean, that's why there's shorter stays and we all know the longer you stay in the hospital, chances are infection, there's a number of reasons why you don't want to stay. So um, the accountable care, as much as it looks like it's a managed care plan, it is, there are some positive things about it because they are shopping around and they are doing your, they're doing homework for you that you haven't been able to do yourself. So it's really, you know, looking into your insurance plan and seeing who's signed up and that's a good place to start. But chances are Wingate's going to be on that. Any other questions? Question. Thank you, Teresa. And I, I agree with Teresa that the fact that so many of you are here this evening means that you are thinking ahead and you are planning ahead. So kudos for you. Um, I think that that's the first step in moving forward. Before we end tonight, I, as part of the calls that I get um, addresses these, but there are a couple of places um, within Reading that. Um, are non-designated 55 plus that we see clusters of seniors living in and it's a very uh, non-scientific poll if I can make my computer up here um, and there are two designated 55 plus residents would be Maplewood Village and also we've all heard of Redding Woods which is going in up by the old Addison Westlake that has both 55 plus housing and non 55. They have not started the construction on the um, 55 plus housing. They anticipate that construction starting within the next six months, they're hoping. <laughs> However, they are selling units and um, they are seeing a lot of seniors purchasing those units. Um, so they are open and we do see seniors moving in uh, to that residence. 
Could you repeat the other than Maplewood? What was the other? Uh, Maplewood Village. Oh, okay, it. It's Thank a you. small unit, a uh, group of condominiums down by REI. That is a 55 plus community. Um, as far as amenities and services, I don't believe they're extensive, but I just wanted to make you aware of where in Reading other seniors are moving in case that's something that's part of your planning. Again, the 55 plus, plus meetings do have services in mm -hmm. them. And they're, right, they're, and of course, you know, the service plans are coming in, the people are mm -hmm. getting services. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> Any of these places you go to, you can get services when you reach that point um, that you need them. And as far as non-designated places where we see um, a large population of Reading seniors um, is Summit Village. Many of our seniors live up at Summit Village. So if you're looking for a community of folks um, who are seniors, so you have maybe run into some friends that you used to know 30 or 40 years ago, and also Reading Commons, uh, which is rental property. There are, we see a large cluster of seniors moving, uh, downsizing and moving into those um, apartments as well. Can I also share Oak Tree? Has a number of seniors mm -hmm. moving in too. But. Yeah, when I, when, I looked, <laughs> when I looked at this, I looked at um, really um, population of 40 or more couples or um, homes that were um, seniors. We have also smaller clusters and smaller apartment units that are all seniors. But these are the larger ones, and I just wanted to offer you up that information as you're doing your planning and your thinking. Of course, I would always say if you are looking to purchase a smaller condominium or an apartment and one of these don't meet your needs is to work with a real estate agent. Um, so, in conclusion, um, what are the next steps? Well, you took the right first step. You came tonight to listen to our wonderful speakers. And the message really is plan for the future. Start thinking about it's never too late, it's never too early to start planning ahead. And part of that is to assess your needs or if you're here on behalf of your parents tonight, to assess your parents' needs. Think of their health now, and if there are health considerations now, what will those concerns look like five or ten years from now? Um, is accessibility to services, is that important to you? Do you anticipate that's important to you? And what types of amenities are you interested in in, in your next home, if you are leaving your home? And then make sure you research all of your options. Schedule visits, as um, Doug said, you know, come in and take a tour around, even if you're five or ten years out. Plan now while you're still able to make that choice. Um, and also, if you're internet savvy, there is an enormous amount of information out on the internet. You want to be very, very careful about what you're looking at and that it's a credible site. One of the sites um, that I sometimes use as a resource, resource is eldercare.gov. They have a wonderful um, document, um, it's rather lengthy, about um, how, simply on housing and how to start planning for the future and things to consider. So if you are internet savvy, I would suggest um, to get on there and just start clicking away, but be very cautious of what sites you're looking at and that, um, that they are credible. So with that, I thank our guests for coming this evening. I thank all of you for coming to our first speaking <laughs> Um, and Sharon Thomas, our Senior Center Coordinator, and Diane Luther, our nurse advocate, for helping you all this I invite you to enjoy some refreshments and come speak with some of our presenters if you have specific questions or if you want to take home some information. We do have an information table over here. You're welcome to browse and take anything. And I would ask. Uh, this is my card. This is the first time we've done this, so I really welcome your feedback. Um, if you found this helpful, if you didn't find this helpful, and what other 
topics you would like us to do this with. We would love to start a series during the, the nice evenings um, for those of you that like to get out. But we want to hear from you what topics you want to learn about. So thank you all for coming. Have a good evening. Okay.